G'day guys, Chris here again from Core Electronics. Today I've got the SciPy from PyCom. Now this is an interesting device, it's one of the microcontrollers out of a set of five available at the moment that includes a Sigfox radio. Now it's interesting why you would want to choose Sigfox, so we're going to need to talk about Sigfox, Sigfox quite a bit. So have a look below for the link to the documentation, otherwise I'll go straight into it. So there's an interesting problem with the SciPy from PyCom in that you can get a low Pi 4 for the same price that also has a Sigfox radio. So the SciPy might not be around for very long, but SciPy 4 does the same thing. Sigfox radio is also available in the PyPy as well. So it's not like the feature is not covered well in the range. But the SciPy gives us a good excuse to talk about Sigfox. If you were going to create an Internet of Things device, you would first of all need to think about what device you're going to buy, and I have a SciPy here that I'm going to show you at the end. You also need to know how you're going to get from the thing to the internet. Now, looking at the PyCom microcontrollers, you've got Bluetooth available, but Bluetooth is only short range, low power. So if you had an internet connected device that could share its connection over Bluetooth, you could use that, but that's physically very restricted. If you use the Wi-Fi that's built in, you can even use an external Wi-Fi antenna and you'll get very good Wi-Fi range. So again, you still need to be able to access a Wi-Fi network. And in general, if you were looking at something that was deployed uh, around in the suburbs, in a rural area, you don't have access to the Wi-Fi networks that are there. They're generally private owned. So the next step up would probably be you need to use cellular data an LTE, 3G connection. Unfortunately, we don't have 2G available in Australia at all anymore. So then you're stepping up into a fair bit of cost. You've got a monthly subscription that's, that's fairly heavy duty. So Sigfox aims to give your Internet of Things device just the connectivity it needs for the minimum cost. And think about it in terms of a cellular radio. So there are Sigfox operators that provide towers, base stations for Sigfox uh, all over the world, and it's one system globally. So whereas you might provide cellular data to your Australian deployment, you can't use that in the US because they use a different set of frequencies for their LTE. So Sigfox is a single global system, and you might be thinking, gee, that sounds a lot like LoRa. Yes, the two of them share the same radio band. The industrial scientific medical radio band, ISM, is just below the one gigahertz range, 800 and something to 900 and something megahertz. And it's different in areas around the world. So when you create your Sigfox code, you have to tell it what zone it's operating in so that it chooses the right frequency. So Sigfox does far more than just provide you the radio that's on your microcontroller. Sigfox is also the protocol that is spoken between the radio and the tower it also provides the tower equipment, the tower radios, the software on the towers, and also the back end system. So the normal deployment of a Sigfox project is that you buy a Sigfox device and put your code on it. And then at the back end, you have an internet cloud service, call it that, that talks to the Sigfox back end. So a message sent from your device basically goes into the Sigfox network, comes out the other side as a single message, a uh, reliable message, a secure message, and your back-end system can deal with that and send a message back in. So Sigfox is a demand-receive system, so generally you would expect the radio to wake up on the device and send out what it needs to send, and if it needs a message back, it will make that as part of the request and wait for the message to come back. So I say that there are Sigfox operators already available. There's already coverage around the world. Let's have a look at that. We'll go to the PC and we can see here on the um, web page that I've created here, the SciPy overview. There's a link here at the top. The logo is a link to the Sigfox website. And there are some great videos there to, uh, to help you learn about what Sigfox is. Um, if I go into the developers link, that will take me to a, a very good uh, learning platform there where I can see videos one after the other and understand all of how Sigfox works. Just going to jump back again for a moment. If I just cover off these points here, it's designed to be secure, low power, long range, low cost. Now there's some more points in there, but if you put all of those things together, you realize that there is going to be 
a very significant limitation on what the service can do. So we'll jump over to the global coverage map as linked here in the documentation. And as I'm in Australia, the first thing I'm going to have to do is zoom out from France because Sigfox was invented in France. So here we go, we'll go and navigate away from France, head over towards Australia. And on the east coast here, north of Sydney, is Newcastle. So I can look there at the office at which I work, where my house is, and I can see that there is Sigfox coverage everywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and create some Sigfox projects that I expect will not only work for me at work and work at home, but they should work on the drive in between. So there you go. Uh, anywhere that you are in the world, you can have a look now at the Sigfox coverage. And Sigfox is brought to you by a local operator. So if you run down the page there, you can see South Africa, Germany, Argentina, Australia has Thinkstra. Um, some countries have multiple operators, but look there at the uh, available providers so that you can see what Sigfox services are available to you. So you basically need to do three things to get your Sigfox project off the ground. First, you need to buy a Sigfox device and put code on it. Second, you need a subscription to get onto the Sigfox network. And then you need something at the back end that talks to the device. Now, very nicely, the PyCom devices that have Sigfox radios come with two years of subscription prepaid. So you get two years to play around and invent. Uh, you could even buy a fleet of these and operate them for two years at no cost. I haven't actually found what the subscription cost is yet, but I will do that so shortly. So if we come and have a look at the bench here, I'll show you the hardware. So here we have a Wi-Pi at the top, which I've used in my videos to date, and below is the SciPy. The main difference here is that you can see the Wi-Pi's um, encapsulated, not really encapsulated, metal shielded radios under here are for, uh, there's a processor under there and also is the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. And this bar here is the antenna, internal antenna. The same if, uh, exists on the SciPy. It has the same package underneath the sticker. There's actually two packages here under this long sticker. So the right hand end of the board is the same as a Wi-Pi. The extreme left hand end of the board is almost the same. On the SciPy, you've got the same LED, the same button, except you have another U.FL connector up here. So at the right hand end, we have a connector for a Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth antenna, and at the left hand end is the Sigfox antenna. And the reason I've left the antenna connected is that it's very important that this device is not booted up without an antenna. Whereas Bluetooth and Wi-Fi can use the built-in antenna unless you select the external, by default, Sigfox will use only the external antenna because it has no internal one. As you can see, they have the same uh, two row of 14 pin, I think it is, connectors. So either of these go straight onto the expansion board and also onto the Pi Track and the Pi Sense. So I hope that's given you something of an introduction to Sigfox and the SciPy from PyCon. It's very interesting. I'm going to be creating some projects so that I can try out the uh, PyPy and the GPy and all of the other Pi devices together so that I can communicate with them on Sigfox. All right, again, the documentation is down below. Thank you so much for watching. See you later.